What's up, people? I am back for another video. Sorry. I'm trying to see something. There you go. Anyway. Sorry, I just set up on my lighter. Um, today, I am reviewing World Is Not Enough. I was supposed to do this last Tuesday, but The World Is Not Enough, for me, as of right now, I'm going to probably say this is the weakest of the Brazen ones. I like Die Another Day. I know there's some... Um, there's some hokey stuff with it, you know, it's not the greatest movie, and yeah, they're, like, the invisible car is a bit much, but I like World, uh, not World, is not, I like Die Another Day, I, lo I love him and Halle Berry in that movie, to me, that just was a fun one. It kind of brought it back to its fun. This one is not bad, it's just, I feel like it's weak. Um, the villain, Elektra, who, who poses as, like, a, a victim kind of thing who is actually in league with Bernard was a decent villain, but he didn't, he didn't scream. The problem with this film, I think is a couple things. One, I think the story was kind of weak, um, in general. And I felt like there was no real villain. Like Renard didn't feel like a main villain. He felt like he should, he felt like a goon. I mean, I guess he kind of was because in a, in a way, Electra, who's a uh, Sophia Marceau, I probably, I'm probably butchering her name, but, that's who her character she's basically the villain um she wants revenge because she was kidnapped by um Renard's men and I guess in eventually I guess they grew a thing she even killed her own dad it's just the problem with doing villains where you reveal other villains halfway through is that you don't have any actual development because when you do the reveal you're almost like the movie's almost over so like throughout the film, you're made to think Renard's the main villain, and he just didn't pull it off. Maybe you get a different actor. He just seemed like a goon from the jump. And but the movie itself is fun. I thought Christmas Jones, um, De 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 La Denise Richards was great. Um, I liked I liked the opening action scene with the the blimp, not the blimp, the the hot the higher balloon scene. I thought that was fun. You even have like a scene where he's um, using um like a snow, a snow ski or whatever you want to call it. Snow, um, the snow things like kind of while people are like skiing at them. Like you, so you have like lots of old action scenes like that. It's just the film I felt like was just kind of weak. It's not bad. I would probably give it like a seven still, but of the, the bras and ones, I think this is the weakest, just, you know, golden eyes, the best one. Then this would, then Tomorrow Never Dies, then I'd probably say this one's the last. So, watching Die Another Day next week, so I can't wait for that one. I had fun with that movie. I know it's over the top, but I had more fun with it. And I, from what I remember, I remember the villain being pretty good, too. I just felt like the villain in this just... If they were going to have it be Elektra, they should have revealed her to be the villain maybe a bit earlier in the movie than they did. And, and when they do, you, you still, I don't know, I didn't feel like she really played, I don't know, maybe it's just Sophia, the, the actress who plays her, I don't know, if maybe she just can't play bad guys. There are some actors and actresses who can't play, good, some actors and actresses can't play a good guy, and I think this is the case, she can't play a bad guy. It's just not believable. So maybe in Renard, maybe they could have got a different actor and he could have been a believable lead, because I didn't buy him as the lead villain. I don't know. But overall, I enjoyed the action. I liked the final fight at the between him and Renard. I like that even M kind of gets involved in the final fight. I thought that was cool. But um, I would still watch it again. Like if I were to go through like all the bras and ones, I'd put this on on again. I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad movie. It's just it's just kind of the weakest. I mean, well, especially compared to the last two. I mean, Golden Eye. And Tomorrow Never Dies with Michelle Yeoh. It's just like those two films. Well, Golden Eye specifically. That film's just iconic. But even Tomorrow Never Dies was just so good. It just I think that's what the problem with this one is. I just feel like the, this one just wasn't as strong as those two. So, but overall, it's still a decent one. So, tomorrow, tonight, I will be doing... Um, I will be reviewing Raw Deal with Arnold Schwarzenegger, so I can't wait to talk about that. That's going to be fun. Um, honestly, that's one I don't really remember. Like, I watched that one as a kid, but not, like, in a long, not probably not since. So, 
Can't wait to talk about that one. So I'll be watch, talking about that one later tonight. But uh, let's get started on uh, The World Is Not Enough. kind of like a cool Bond action scene, like, you know how like, these movies usually start. <laughs> <coughs> Where one of, like, Renard's, like, assassins tries to steal uh, some weapons. <coughs> she uses, tries to use a, a hot air balloon. <coughs> we get a cool kind of, like, chase scene, like, that's the one thing I do like about Pierce, Pierce's Bond is he does do a lot of action. <laughs> so he tries to stop her and even convinces her, you know, that he try, well, tries to convince her that he'll protect her, but she refuses, so she cuts, like, a thing to cause it to basically explode. <clears throat> and then this is where we meet Elektra, who, who's in danger, you know, from Renard and his people. So Bond is basically assigned to protect her and obviously you have those moments where they kind of start to connect then he goes to a casino like you know he always has to go to a casino um where he starts to sus sus blah. he starts to suspect something's up with her when she just basically throws a game of uh one of those games in a casino i can't remember the game because i'll be it's been a lot of weeks since I've seen it. Um, then Bond goes undercover as like a doctor at a at a um, research place. To, to this is where we meet Christmas Jones. I do like that that um, you know because the last film you know you had Wylan who was uh, you know Michelle Yeoh's character in Tomorrow Never Dies. She was like in, you know, she was a Chinese spy. I like that in this one, they're like, okay. I like that they change it up with the Bond girls. That sometimes they're spies and then they're, or agents. And sometimes they're just either a scientist or a hacker. You know, they're just kind of like a regular girl. I do think that's kind of cool. Because you kind of get to see a regular, like, because the next film, if I remember right, Holly Berry was like a spy or something. She was, so, or an agent. One of the two. It's been a bit since I've seen Die Another Day. But, um... So I do like that they change it up. They don't try to just do the same thing. So, well, before that, we get a cool scene of uh, Bond uh, getting chased down by Renard's people um, in, a, in, in, like, snow. He's using a snow ski um, while uh, they chase him with uh, fucking skis. Like, it's that's the thing about this movie I like is it, like... Like I said, these movies pay homage to the old ones. Like the old Bond movies, you always have a scene where he's either skiing in the snow and being chased down by bad guys. I like that they do those callbacks, even though it was 99 by this point. So they, you, they can even say, oh, that's just hokey. But they still lean into it, you know? they, they very, I think that's the problem with the newer Bonds, from what I'm hearing, is that they basically don't lean into, like, the fun anymore. Like, they kind of started... Also, I've heard they became too much like the... I like these movies, like the, you know, the Jason Bourne movies, but that's not James Bond. They're not supposed to feel like just basically the Jason Bourne movies, where it's a lot of jump cuts and the actions are much more kind of serious. And yeah, you don't have like fun action scenes like that, Bond getting chased in like a ski, you know? So, um, M comes down, um, because it's, uh, getting, uh, well, before this, um, Renard steals, uh, some missiles um, this is where, yeah, he blows, cause he, he's kind of, like, going undercover as, like, uh, like a worker. So, Bond and Christmas Jones escape. Um, and I thought him and, uh, Denise Richards, I mean, she was, it made sense why they cast her, she was hot at the time. Um, and I thought she worked for the movie. Um, this is where we get the reveal that Elektra is bad, um, because she, uh, kidnaps them. And uh, she revealed she killed her dad. So, and that, yeah, she started having an affair with, uh, with, uh, with Renard, who, I, my problem with Renard 
he's not that interesting. And I think the problem with him, too, it might be the casting. The guy they casted just, he didn't feel like a main lead bad guy. He felt like he was just a goon. I think if they casted somebody else, I think it could have worked better. I just felt like the guy they got just did not pull off being a... Like, it's not that he didn't pull off being a bad guy. He didn't pull off being the main bad guy. He felt like he was a goon for somebody else every time I watched. Other than that, like... I mean, I guess you could say Elektra is the real bad guy of the film, but even her, I think she didn't pull it off. I think it's okay. She can't play a bad guy. Some actors... And actresses, like I said, they can't play villains sometimes. They can, sometimes when they try to play a villain, it's just unbelievable. And I think it's my case here. I felt like Sophia Marceau, um, who played Electra, did not pull off being a bad guy. I think she would have just been better off being a good guy, and then Renard, with a different actor, could have just been a bad guy on his own. Because she, like, Fam Kate Jensen in um, GoldenEye, she was fucking believable as a villain. Like, she actually played Psycho. Like, she pulled it off. Whereas I felt like Electra, like, I guess she was supposed to be Psycho, but it didn't come off. It came off force, like, when they tried it, every time she tried to seem like she was a bad guy. So, yeah, so she, um, basically wants revenge. So Bond has to save her, well, not save her, um, he has to try to stop Bernard, along with Christmas Jones. And Bond ends up freeing her, like, cause at, at the hotel that they're staying at, he ends up freeing M, and then M kills um, Electra, and that would be in a final fight between Renard and Bond, which it was decent, not bad. Um, Bond ends up impaling him, and Christmas Jones and Bond escape, and you know, of course, like the facility blows up. Like, you, got, you have that classic moment. And then they hook up in Istanbul. While, like, <coughs> and other agents watch on the screen. <coughs> I thought that was funny. <coughs> and I love them in these movies. Judy Dench, to me, is them. <coughs> like I said in my Screen Rain is Gay article that I did the other day. <coughs> this idea of there weren't strong women. M is Bond's boss, and if anything, at times you put him, you put some in his place. <coughs> <coughs> so like, she, like she lets him know who's in charge. So like, I don't even agree with that. And fuck, in this movie, M <coughs> as an action scene, she kills Electra. <coughs> <coughs> so I don't understand this whole like we need a female Bond thing. But anyway, that's a side of it. <coughs> <coughs> but overall, I enjoy this one. It's just. The weakest of the the Brosnan ones, just because the other ones I just think are stronger, <coughs> especially the first two. But Pierce Brosnan still killed it. I like uh, Car uh, Denise Richards, and I was gonna say Carmen Electra. Denise Richards in this, I thought she was good as the Bond girl, Christmas Jones. Her and Pierce, I thought had solid chemistry. I think that's like the one thing if you're gonna be a Bond girl, you gotta have chemistry with Bond, and I thought she had decent chemistry with him. Electra wasn't a good villain. She probably shouldn't have. Just, she probably shouldn't have been the villain. It should have just been Renard with a different actor. I think that's my problem more with Renard. Not necessarily his writing. It's more it, it, the actor that they got to play him. He didn't. He didn't feel like he'd be a lead villain. It never. He felt like he was a goon for somebody else. And I guess in a way he was, but it was just so obvious. So other than that, I enjoyed this one. I definitely will watch it again. It's just not the strongest of entry of these ones so but anyway guys i'm loving this bond series next week i can't wait for sure i'll try to make sure for sure it'll be on tuesday it was just yeah i was fucking out out of it yesterday i was like on two hours sleep so but for sure next tuesday i will be doing um die another day which i'm dreading a little bit not necessarily because the movies i like the movie it's more i'm dreading because this is the last of the brosnan era and brosnan is He's my second favorite. Cause he's he was Bond to me growing up, because he was the main Bond fucking at the time when I was coming up. You know, obviously when I was born and shit. Nick, um, Sean Connery is the best one, but I think Brosnan is another one who personifies the character and was a solid, like kind of modern. They modernized him a little bit, obviously with the way he fights and the stunts, but he's still very much he is that classic Bond. 
You know, every time he's a shake and not stirred, like he delivers it great. So I'm definitely dreading the end of a little bit. Just because I know the Craig ones aren't. Well, besides Casino Royale, I, I hear are very bad. Obviously, it's I hear who knows. I could fucking love them for some reason. I, or I don't know. So we'll see when we get there. But uh, tonight, Raw Deal Review. And then tomorrow, updated Buffy ranking. So, but other than that, guys, I'm going to cheers and I'll see y'all later tonight. And it will be tonight, for sure.